Good morning, good morning, good morning. As you know, I'm doing a series on depression. There is a five part, um, five parts to the series. Um, two days ago, we covered uh, the first part, so today is number two. So if you missed the first one, go back and read the first part of the depression series because by the time we cover the five parts, we're going to connect this all together. Okay, now hopefully you read the, the first part or watched the first part, I should say, and it pretty much told us uh, God's remedy for depression was to get up and eat. And actually we are covering Elijah when he was going through a depression. So let's see what it tells us to do today. Now I'm up and ready. And like I said in the first part, get up and eat, get yourself going physically. So I'm already up making coffee and a, a good breakfast. So hey, in the meantime, let's see what it tells us today. Excuse my glasses, they are broken. I think I said that before. Okay. God's remedy for depression. Number two. The scripture text is 1 King chapter 19, verse 9. The Lord asked Elijah, why are you here? Why are you here, Elijah? Tell God your frustrations. Tell God your frustrations. After being restored through proper food and rest, Elijah traveled for 40 days. Then he went into a cave and spent the night. In the morning, the Lord asked him, why are you here? Why are you here, Elijah? Elijah answered, I've always done my best to obey you. But your people have broken their solemn promise to you. They have torn down your altars and killed all your prophets except me. And now they're even trying to kill me. Elijah poured out all his feelings and God allowed him to let off the steam. He wasn't shocked by Elijah's complaints. Sometimes it's helpful to share your feelings with a trusted friend or counselor. It's cathartic, a cleaning out, a venting of all the things that have been pushed down inside you that are contributing to your feelings of depression. And Elijah had plenty of stuff pushed down inside. Notice the emotions he experienced. He was afraid. Then he felt resentment, followed by low self-esteem and guilt. I've had enough. I'm no better off than my ancestors. ancestors. He was angry because he had worked hard for nothing. He was lonely to the point of despair. Now they're even trying to kill me. He was worried. Wow. When you combine fear, resentment, low self-esteem, guilt, anger, loneliness, and worry, it can open the door to depression. So God let him spill it all out. He said, Elijah, what's frustrating you? What's eating you up? And Elijah poured it all out. So when you are depressed, what you need to do is take it to God in prayer and seek professional help. Now that is amazing. Look at all of those feelings, loneliness, worry, despair, frustration, guilt. He was afraid that they were fixing to kill him because they were uh, after him. That killed all the other prophets. And you know what I like about this one today? Sometimes we hold all that in. It builds up and then we end up holding it in. And so Elijah took it to God first. So let's take it to God first and let our frustrations. And, and I want to see, see how God is so loving and so merciful that he lets us take out the frustration. He doesn't turn us down. He's our first counselor. And guess what? Nobody else even has to know. We can get up and talk to God first thing in the morning during the day going to work at nighttime and nobody has to know what we're telling God because he's such a loving God. You see how he let Elijah pour out all of those feelings and then he, he 
told him what to do. And that's what I like about God. Once we give it to God, he comes back with an answer for us and what we can do. So not only did Elijah seek God first, that's the key. Seek God first, but then comes the professional help. See how God has it to where we can have professional help. You know, back then they didn't have it where we could go see a psychiatrist or a psychologist. You know, God has made it to where we can come to him first because remember, he's the ultimate doctor and healer. But then he also has it to where we can go to a professional. And I had to go see a professional. Um, I was given uh, medication and it took them several times to get the medication right. But I finally realized uh, it wasn't even about the medications because now I only take one of them sometimes. It's all about your mindset and letting God heal you. Because when my daughter first passed away, that first week, I didn't sleep for like seven or eight days. I mean, literally, I could not sleep during the day and I could not sleep during the night. It was a whole week. I didn't even know a whole week had passed until it was a week later. But I could not sleep physically. I was up. I mean, I was up no matter what kind of pill they gave me. It did not work. I was alert and up for seven to eight days after my daughter passed away last year. So I know that God is the remedy because when God says rest, you rest. And yes, he has given us professionals now that can prescribe things for us. And yes, we must utilize those services if we need to, because that way you can talk to the person you know, a counselor too, and vent and frustrate. Nobody has to know but you and God and that counselor. And um, just remember though, God is the ultimate prescription. God is the ultimate healer. He's the one that's going to give you that rest and that peace and that joy that will eventually come back no matter how disparaging your situation. No matter how disparaging. And it's just like Elijah. Imagine you've been run out of the city. All the other prophets have been killed. Now they're after you. And he didn't have anywhere to go but in a cave. Can you imagine? He's in a, a dark cave. God knows what's in the cave. But then he still had to come out of there and travel again to get to where God needed him to go. But look at God. God's with him the whole time. So today's part number two. Tell God your frustration. Matter of fact, after you watch this, turn everything off, shut it down. Tell God your frustrations and be truthful and honest. Remember, God always knows. And I'm telling you, God's going to do some things to pull you out of that depression and give you some hope again so that you don't even have to have worry, dis despair, frustration, and all of that in your life. You can get up every day. And get started and give the frustrations over to the Lord first thing and you're going to be okay. All right. This is number two of a five-part series on depression. I hope to see you for the next one. Get up. Have a nice breakfast. Get you some coffee or some tea. Get your stay, day started. Maybe do a little exercise. But tell God your frustrations this morning or if it's night where you are. And let's do this. Go in peace. Be blessed.